I never really questioned ethnic diversity and you know even gender diversity in physics when I first started out just because I was not aware of the scale of things and when it started really showing was A levels I saw I was the only girl in the you know class or it would be you know university classes where there'd only be a few people of colour or in my master degree classes where I would often be the only person of colour in the room but I don't think it ever phased me and I don't think it ever affected any of the choices I made so it was something I was aware of but it was never something that got in the way for me at least I didn't really know that many people that did physics that came from a similar ethnic background so I wasn't really aware of if what I felt sitting in those classes you know the slight intimidation uh, being very aware that you're you know sta you're standing out kind of feeling was something that was being felt by other students just because there was no one there that experienced the same things that I was talking to and when these things were kind of brought up with other people with similar uh, ethnic backgrounds they would often be studying subjects that were predominantly you know a career path encouraged by my sort of community so subjects like engineering or medicine so it was difficult sometimes to have those conversations and find the right people to have those conversations with especially because I did my degree before the whole Black Lives Matter thing really took off so these kind of conversations weren't really things people were talking about and so even conversations like you know about privilege and white privilege and just privilege that all of us experience in some sort of degree wasn't something that was talked about or acknowledged really i had an instance at university it was must have been the first week you know fresher you're very nervous you're trying to make friends you're in a new environment and this girl i was chatting to this girl that i hadn't known before and she asked me what my name was and I said, you know, my name's Minuja. And then she kind of went in a very dismissive way, went, oh, that's going to be too hard to remember. I'll just, and too hard to pronounce, I'll just go with V. I'm going to call you V. And it wasn't a sort of, you know, nickname as in I tried, but I'm finding it very difficult. So I'll just, is that okay? It was her deciding for me that she's going to call me V. So even those little kind of nuances that you would have ignored before and not really been aware of because at the time I just kind of went yeah sure because I was so anxious and you know I wanted to make a good impression and make friends whereas now I'm very much pretty adamant on you know you can call me any nickname you want but get my name right kind of thing so I think the cultural differences there's also a thing of I think when you grow up and you realize that you're different from other white kids you kind of hide the cultural differences you kind of it almost it's almost like you don't want the other kids to see that you're different even though it's probably blatantly obvious <laughs> and it takes a while I think especially for first generation immigrant children to embrace those differences and kind of find the balance between not being completely Western, but also not being completely from whatever ethnic background they're from and kind of finding their own place on that scale and mixing and matching certain cultural aspects and experiences from their life. Yeah, it's very hard to find the balance between, you know, do I actively tell them that this isn't right or is it unintentional is it in my head is it something that was actually you know something with racist connotations and also there's also just this issue with you know am i being hypersensitive i think that's and something that's in every person's mind thinking about am i overreacting 
Am I overanalyzing the situation? Was it just, you know, a small detail that slipped their mind that wasn't meant to be racist? And it's easier to deal, in a way, it's easier to deal with situations that are outright racist because then you can call people out on it and you know how to react, you know, with anger and hurt and stuff. But when it's things like microaggressions and they're a lot more subtle, then it's harder to figure out where you stand and where they stand. So I think with things like that, actually, there's a lot of stress and anxiety that's caused by, you know, did I make the right decision when I responded like that? Was I being hypersensitive or should I have responded to that? And should I have stood up for myself in that situation? So I. I don't really think there's a right way to go. You just do what you think is feel, feels right and, you know, do what you think is right by you. And that's pretty much all we can do. I think something I wish I would have heard when I started experiencing these kind of unacceptable behaviours would be that you won't always respond in you know a cool way like you see in the movies and online it can be very anxiety inducing and you most likely will you know it will most likely respond in a very shaky voice and it'll probably really take you off guard and it won't be a comfortable experience where you know you'll come out as the hero most the time I think I would have just told myself to say something because it's almost like a battle of dominance in your own head once you let it go once it's easier to let it go a second time and then you just keep telling yourself you know it's fine I mean I survived it once I can get through it again and it's easier some it feels like it's easier sometimes to just ignore it and you know think they're never going to change so i shouldn't spend my energy on this everything's already hard enough as it is but i wish i would have said something i think just because it created an image of where i stood in my own mind that affected my confidence quite a lot so when i started actually responding and especially responding quite firmly it actually helped me a lot more to deal with it. You know, whether they agreed, whether they understood, what at the end of the day wasn't really that important as me standing up for myself and, you know, just having my own back. You know, there's no salvation for the person who doesn't save themselves. So, yeah, I think that was something I wish I would have done. But I think it's something that just comes with experience you just you can't just tell a child you know if someone racially abuses you stand up for yourself especially if it's someone with much more authority much older it, it's a very daunting thing i think for me finding the balance when i joined uni was just not really putting up a barrier and cutting people off when they seem too different I think staying open was something quite important because once you start conversations with people then you actually realize actually we're quite you know similar in this regard and although we come from completely different backgrounds it's still something we're able to move past you know 